Hello and welcome to the latest. This is the Music Meets podcast. I'm delighted to be joined by Chris and Dan, who are in Popclaw, an exciting indie rock duo from the southeast of England. Coming up on the latest podcast, we're going to find out how Popclaw started, their musical influences, and about their debut single, Same Old Story. So, Chris and Dan, welcome along to the This Is the Music Meets podcast. It's great to have you both on. How are you doing today? Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for having us. Yeah, I'm good. I'm a bit tired, but I'm good. <laughs> well, it's great to, uh, as I say, it's great to have you on, and we uh, we won't keep you on for too long. Um, but kind of like what I'm sort of quite interested to know, because obviously you are a sort of a you know a, a, a fairly new band. Well, you are a new band, I guess, effectively on on like the new music scene. So, kind of like then, let's let's go back to the right back to the very beginning. How then did did Pop Claw start? Uh, it should take this me or you, Dan. I don't mind who. Uh... You t- you take this, Chris, and I'll interject. Or okay, yeah, all right. Uh, well, I'll go back to twenty twenty. Uh, when in I was furloughed and I picked up the guitar. And I, I just uh when my son went to bed, uh, very rock and roll. Um, <laughs> I basically basically fiddled about on the old guitar, played some stuff, and recorded some little ideas, and then um. I was looking for a singer and then I took a, probably a good while to get to find Dan. And uh, that was Dan probably, I think probably this time last year, actually. He was probably with me, actually, wasn't it? And, um, yeah, we sort of had similar musical influences and, um, and it seems to sort of click. And, um, yeah, we've gone from there, really. So, um, and we've just been sort of recording and writing stuff and, yeah, ever since then, really, we up to where we still are now. But, um, yes, yeah, so that's the sort of history of how we started. Sure. And and the name, was was that already in place, or did that come, like, once you joined up with Dan? Uh, no, that was sort of um, when a good few months, I think, uh, when, yeah, because we sort of were, I think I'm an iron about names for quite a while, and... Um, I just gave a massive list of all sorts of names to Dad, and then he sort of picked out five. I think it was that like, four or five, something well, we, like, wasn't it? Yeah, like yeah. And then um, obviously some were already taken, and then uh, Popcorn wasn't, and uh, we thought that was quite a nice, a nice ring to it. And um, yeah, here we are. That's the. Yeah, we are. Yeah, I think I think it helps that I'm a massive fan of the boys as well, and you know, Popclaw is yeah. a character in the boys. She sadly meets her demise very early <laughs> on, but uh... <laughs> I love that. So obviously, um, the debut single, uh, same old story, uh, is due for release this Friday, uh, the tenth of February. Um, it's a song uh, that I've really enjoyed listening to um, since you obviously sent it over to me a couple of weeks ago. Um, so, kind of like first of all, um, how are you looking forward? You know, what's what's the feeling like between you with with getting your first song, you know, your first song out there into the into the wide world now? Uh, that's good. I mean, uh, I did. Yeah. It's a funny story. Uh, well, it's a bit awkward. Uh, I'll be honest here. It's a bit of a... Um, so basically, um, I uploaded same old story. Uh, when I was in... When I've been in bands before, the whole... The aggregator we've used um, beforehand, you could set a <laughs> release date. And uh, I thought it was still the same, but it's all changed. So, but it's, <laughs> it has already been out. Um <laughs> Yeah, to be all fit. But the thing is, we've had some quite good feedback, sort of almost a bit by accident. It's come on quite a few playlists, which is quite cool. Yeah. And uh, had a few even random people that have um, have found us, which is also cool. Um, So, yeah, it's been, it's had a nice little build up um, as a debut. And um, yeah, we've really enjoyed people listening to it. And um, yeah, we've some good feedback, haven't we, Dan? I think I have, and certainly from it. Yeah, I mean, for me, it comes it comes from, you know, somewhere a bit different. I think that, uh, yeah, we've had some good feedback, but I'm kind of not bothered. 
like we've made the music we want to make we're putting it out there i'm happy with the results even if it sort of touches one person and one person enjoys it you know that's something that we made that's had you know it's had artistic value for someone and uh if if it touches a hundred people or a thousand people so be it but it's really more about the creative process and you know hoping that people yeah relate to what we do but you know that that's on them once it's out in the world it's out of our hands yeah sure so you, you've just fun enough there Dan that's one of the questions I was going to ask actually um was kind of like about the creative process for the for the song so so how did that work? Did, did did you come who come up with the lyrics, who come up with the, the music? How does it how does it work? So um with Popclaw, Chris and I tend to have not too defined roles. Um like I'll pick up guitar on a track, he'll pick up bass or vice versa, mm. or one of us will have an idea that we've got sort of that we're working on and we'll demo say 90% of it. And then, you know, send the other sort of track off, the tracking off to the other one and the other one will add bits or tinker and do things or come up with ideas. Um, and we have pretty much an open discussion going all the time about different bits on different songs. It's really cool. It's a good collaborative way to work, even though we've never met in person. And oh, uh, Right. OK. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't I wasn't aware of that and that was actually going to be uh sorry I've interrupted there but it's actually going to be a question I was going to ask was it was it recorded in the studio or, or was it something that you've done you know like the kind of like the DIY you know sort of process you know recording it at home and you you've sort of answered that there really so with same old story it started life as a demo that Chris had called 20 right and um with 20 um it it was sat in my inbox for quite a while because there was there's a whole plethora of songs we've been working on and I was kind of looking at it and going I don't know what to do with it I don't know what to do with it I think we need to do this or what about that so it took me a good a good while to get my head around any kind of idea with it Chris sent me some lyrics over which really seemed to work um we were listening to a lot of um, the undertones at the time and I thought it'd be really cool to sort of stick some sort of nice whittly guitar bits, mm -hmm. and, yeah. uh, you know, just, just have fun with it and put it out there. And lyrics wise, uh, Chris came up with the first verse and the chorus. I came up with the second and the, what Chris calls the Elvis Costello bit. that's fine i absolutely love that there. that's really interesting and and kind of like as well because um um obviously going through you like your social media and stuff you know with, with like a lot of other bands and stuff you know it's oh we've got a song coming out and we're playing, um, you know, we're playing live here, et cetera, et cetera. But you haven't got any uh, plans at the moment for, for any live gigs. Is Obviously, you've not met, so that might kind of like might answer this question already. But is there any plans to sort of bring bring Popclaw out live? Or Because you, I think you've got about five or six um, other releases, haven't you? Singles released, haven't you, for yeah. this year? Am I right in saying? Yeah, I mean they're all they're all good to go. They're all on the all the back burner. But um, yeah, we would like to. I would like to certainly. But um, yeah, we'd have to meet up first, wouldn't we? Uh, in real life. But, uh, yeah, I, think I think definitely. Yeah, I think I think we'd both like to do that eventually. It's just uh, obviously living in two, we're not a million miles away, really. But um, yeah, I mean it would be cool to sort of do something um, eventually. I think some of them would sound quite good. Some of the songs we have it would sound really good live. Um, yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, it, when it comes to this this band, I've I'm I'm in no rush to sort of do things badly. I mean, I'm happy to take my time and do it well. Mm -hmm. um, and in terms of playing live and stuff, we need to get, you know, we need to get a full kind of lineup together, wow. and we uh, rehearse and. You know, I can see it happening down the line. I can't see it happening right now. Yeah. Um, purely, purely for time of life, things going on with both of us. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do Chris out of, uh, out of things going on with him. But uh, 
you know, my partner's pregnant and other things. So, you know, fam- we're both family men and that has to come first. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, sure. Totally, totally understand that. And uh, that's the same here as well. Well, my partner's not pregnant, but yeah. <laughs> anyway, so... I remember, I, remember, I remember the kids just sort of become successful, you know, together and they can just take popcorn on when we, um, <laughs> we can't do it anymore. <laughs> it, it's that's like, brilliant. Yeah. Yeah, that's brilliant. I love that. That's great. So, um, obviously, one of the things, and I've seen you, um, you are quite active on uh, on social media. Um, you obviously released a little clip of the uh, Teenage Kicks uh, song, obviously by the by the Undertones. So, kind of like, what was it about that song that you wanted to do, like a little sort of cover of it? Um, I think we both. Well, we Dan and I mentioned about covers and. Um... We sort of, uh, um, I think, I think before that we did, we were talking about Iggy Pop Passenger, which we have recorded. Yeah. But then I think we both sort of, obviously, Dan said about undertones, and um, yeah, we just thought, well, you know, I know it's a well, uh, is a well. I mean, I've done it in every band I think I've ever been in that song, but um, we thought it's a cool idea, you know, let's just do it. And Dan added some different sort of guitar bits and. Yeah, it's, it's just it's just a fun song to play live. Um, yeah. to play live. Uh, just play, you know, it's just a nice, simple song, and it's got a good, good energy to it. And I think it sort of fits in with what we, with our other stuff as well. So, yeah, it's been a, when we uh, uh, when we were recording that, I had to redo the vocals. I mean, I was trying to channel my best Fergal Sharkey, and unfortunately. I sounded like the old paedophile from Family Guy. So, <laughs> it was terrible. Yeah, I'm, it was a, I'm glad he re recorded that. <laughs> what Dan doesn't know, they're, run, they're buried in the mix down, really like, like down. They're still in there. In. Yeah, cool. <laughs> waiting for like the deluxe album version to come out in a little, in a couple of years' time. I've got a yeah. demo of it lying around somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Love this. This is great. So, obviously, uh, as you guys know, um, here at This Is The Music, we like to kind of like, you know, shine a light on bands, you know, like Popclaw that are, you know, trying to make their way in, in into the new music scene. So, kind of like over the last, I guess, sort of like 12 months or so, have there been any bands um, or maybe like a solo artist at all that have, that have caught either of your eye that you're, you know, really, really enjoying what they're doing? Do they have to be unsigned? They don't have to be unsigned, no. Okay. So, so, I've, got, I've got a couple I could say that are unsigned. Uh, I'll give a little shout. Um, one is, I might pronounce their name totally wrong here, uh, Permissionable indulgence they're an american oh, band yeah, they've, they've given us a bit of a listen and that we listen to their stuff so they're a bit um i messaged them and said they sound a bit like smashing pumpkins mixed with placebo but i think they're a bit more almost electronic sort of rock but they're quite cool and they're quite nice as well yeah um I've got on instagram with and uh, another one is alton willow she's a bit more folky she's from ken uh, i like her stuff as well um that's who I could give a shout out to. So. Yeah, sure. And how about you, Dan? Oh, man. I've not been to a gig in a long time. I listen to really mainstream stuff as well. So, like, Ghost, I really like what they're doing at the minute. Um, I'm really enjoying what I've heard so far of the new Fallout Boy album. I think that's great. Um, I've really enjoyed the Red Hot Chili Peppers two albums last year. Um I think Return of the Dream Canteen is as good as any of their sort of heyday stuff. Okay, um, yeah. yeah, like I've not listened to proper underground music in quite a while. <laughs> it's funny because since since doing this, this is kind of like all I listen to now. I've virtually gone the complete opposite direction. It's just just new bands. I don't really listen to the, you know, the well, I listen to the favourites every now and again, but not not really that often anymore. It's yeah, strange just how things, you know, develop and and happen. But anyway, that's that's enough about me waffling on. Anyway, <laughs> so it kind of like the- I I I get excited about like a remaster of an album I've heard 
you know, pretty much every day since I was 14. It's that kind of, <laughs> oh, I've heard this for 20 years, but I can listen to it in a new way. Yeah, no, it's true. Don't send me a Beatle remaster. I've listened to this about 20 times, mate. You haven't seen any, you know, and they were me over before. I've heard that. You know, it's always a remaster of a Beatles song in there somewhere, you know. Yeah, definitely. I must have, I haven't, didn't listen to the, um, to the last remastered one, uh, obviously the album, it was, I can't remember, it was October time, yeah. I think, when it was something like that that he came out. I haven't, I haven't actually listened to it yet, um, but probably should, but I've got it, as you say, I've heard it so many times. Is it going to make that much of a difference to me? I don't know, prob- probably not, but hey, <laughs> it's the Beatles, you should listen to it, I guess. I think yeah. the, I think the new mix is really good. Oh, it's not even a new mix. I think the way that because it was recorded mono, the mm. way that they've managed to splice it down and then you know f- pick out the different elements of the music, is it works really well on that remaster. And I think that you know maybe so far back as seven years ago, the technology wasn't there to do that. Those albums no. were only ever going to get remastered as a single waveform. Mm-hmm. And now they can they can be pulled apart and rebuilt and you know resampled with modern technology and you know what when things maybe aren't quite the highest quality recording or they're recorded in mono and perhaps there's room for them to be taken and made stereo mm-hmm. I think it's a good thing. Mm. Okay, well, sounds like then I should probably probably pull my finger out and. Um... <laughs> And I'll give it a listen because uh, I, I do, you know, definitely am interested in that in that type of thing, you know, being able to to sort of change it and obviously bring it up to a, you know, modern day um, kind of like, you know, sound and, you know, with the technology that you've mentioned as well there. Um, so kind of like for you two guys then personally, sort of like who are your like musical um, like influences and or idols, whatever, whatever way you want to look at it, that sort of like, you know, got you thinking that, you know, yeah, I want to pick up a guitar or I want to start singing and, and that sort of thing? Uh, well, I'll start off. Uh, with me, um, it was Green Day. Okay. And, yeah. uh, and then basically went on from there to sort of, I went to Levana and I sort of went Levana Oasis and then, uh, well, after that, really, it was sort of anyone and everyone, really. So they were sort of more free. I went to them sort of three sort of core ones. What got me to playing guitar? Yeah, sure. And how about you, Dan? I think initially I wanted to pick up a guitar because of Kurt Cobain. Um, and then sort of your music taste develops. I listened to a lot of. I've I've, li- I've been in all kinds of bands. Listened to all kinds of music. I was. I've been in death metal bands. I've been in sort of grunge bands and punk bands um so I, I sort of have influences all over it's all about the songwriting for me yeah um big fan of uh big fan of jim steinman mm-hmm. uh his songwriting was incredible um freddie mercury although i sound nothing like him as a vocalist you've got to play to what's in your wheelhouse i do not have those pipes <laughs> um, <laughs> Guns and Roses, yet again, I'm no Axel, but really, really incredible songwriting, you know. Yeah, yeah, sure, definitely. Some uh, some great um, inspirations in there, great bands and, and artists, and kind of like then I'm quite intrigued to see what the response to, for this question is going to be. Um, so kind of like if you had um, a musical time machine, um, what like era of music would you like to be transported back to? Or are you quite happy being here in the present? Well, I, I say I was born in the right era, but I was I was born in ninety one. So I, I wished I was, I wished I <laughs> wished I was eighteen in nineteen ninety one. That's basically yeah. because I would have got I would have got Nevermind and I would have got definitely maybe and I would have got all those great other nineties albums as well. So I, I would have rather, you know, I just want to see more of the great. <laughs> Absolutely. So Chris is going back to the 90s. How about you, Dan? You know, I'm going to go the 90s, but I'm going to go in a specific direction and say that 90s Seattle scene. Right. You had, you know, you had Nirvana, you had Soundgarden, you've got Pearl Jam coming out, 
you've got Alice in Chains, mm. you know, pretty much producing, all producing their seminal work. It's, and you've got early Chili Peppers. I mean, 91, you've got Blood Sugar Sex Magic. You've got Metallica bringing out the Black Album if you wanted something a bit harder. You've got both Use Your Illusion albums and Appetite was just three years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What's happened to music now? Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, as well. It's, uh, I think, I'm not sure, I can't remember which one of you put it up um, on your socials, but I think it, it's fair to say that now it's um, it's probably more, in some people's eyes, I should say, it's more about social media than actually the music, if you get where I'm coming from with that. So kind of yeah. like um, the next question as well that we're going to ask you, which sort of follows on a little bit from that that last one, is um, we're going to ask you guys to put together um, a, like a hypothetical uh, mini music festival, um, so, which you guys clearly are, all, are responsible for organising. Um, Popclaw are on the bill. So what we'd like to know is um, what would be the dream venue? Um, who would be, what would be your entrance music? Um, are you going to have a special announcer uh, to announce you onto the stage? Um, and as well, we're going to pick five bands, well, four bands from you guys with with five bands across the festival. So, um, yeah, Chris, what would be your dream venue to play at? Um, I've never been there. I've always found it at the Roundhouse. Oh, always great, great venue. Yeah, yeah, I'd love to do one there. Uh, that'd be my dream venue. Unfortunately, the first one I could walk. I think it was the O2. I don't want to play the O2. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's better to have the. Uh, I mean, I, I don't mind the O2. But I think it's definitely better to see the, you know, the smaller, you know, intimate venues. I just feel it, it just means a little bit more, you know, than. Yeah, I mean, I think that one is sort of the right size. That well, from what I've seen on the long TV and all that. Yeah, I think that's the right size sort of venue, really. Yeah, perfect, yeah. perfect. Are you happy with that, Dan, for the venue? Yeah, the roundhouse is cool. We're not going to sell very many tickets for the roundhouse, but you know, you know it, it, well, it packs up quite low. <laughs> you say that it depends who else we're going to be putting on the bill here. So, kind of like, would would you guys have um, entrance music to whip the crowd up a little bit, or are you just going to come straight out on the stage and just you know arms aloft? Here we are. This is us. Oh, it's I've got always... a big deck. Let's get ready to rumble. <laughs> <laughs> brilliant what an answer <laughs> I love that it's great <laughs> I was going to go with like when I saw Queens of the Stone Age I came on to um, the Clockwork Orange theme tune oh, the... right nice oh, yeah I was, nice. was going to go and call but Dan just beat me to it with that one so I think we go with that one aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> yeah you definitely outvoted on that one I'm sorry <laughs> The game always have to win, just because it's done. <laughs> yeah. It'll be fun at least. <laughs> and um, we'll, I, I think, because of the entrance music, I don't think we bother. We'll bother with a, with a special announcer getting announcing you boys on. I think that will be that'll be enough to get the the crowd going. I think so. Kind of like then, as I say, we've got um, spike space uh, on the festival for five bands. So kind of like for this part of the question, we want four other bands. Um, and you guys need to decide as well where Popclaw um, are going to fit on the bill. Are you going to be the opening band, or are you going to put yourselves on as the uh, as the headline act, or anywhere in the middle? I think, uh, in, in my view, I think probably just before you know, the last band, I think just before the big end comes out, I think we can't be can't be too arrogant. Come and go, we're going to be top of the bill. But yeah, I think, I think that's why I put up. Right, okay, I like that. And what about um as I say, you your four bands that are gonna join you on, on, on this gig? Can we have Pink Floyd? Yeah, you could go for whoever you want, get them back. You want to get them back, get them back. <laughs> um, but in, in uh, we're never getting Pink Floyd back, are we? But in all the uh, severity, I yeah. Mean, <laughs> you know, sadly. Um in in all seriousness, let's put let's put a band like Coheed and Cambria somewhere on the bill, but let's put them like second or third. 
Okay, yeah. yeah. So I've, I've, I've got, am I picking the other two? I've got... Yeah, uh, absolutely. So, so what order of... So my wife, my wife came in the room, sorry. Um, so I have Pink Floyd. Where are Pink Floyd going? Sorry. What order? Oh, well, Pink, Pink Floyd can open. Pink Floyd can open for us. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> That's a joke, I'm by the way. This line up because he probably wouldn't have that with him. Uh, so, um, <laughs> all right. They can open up, you know. I don't know, how long are they going to be playing for? Are they going to, if they play like Shine on, they're going to be on for like 20 minutes just doing one song, aren't they? I mean, um... <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we need a, short, a, a band that stays short with songs just to eat, you know, level it up a little bit. Um, oh, God. I'm going to have a, it's a bit of a weird, it's probably it's going to be a really surprise there my choice if you don't know if you've heard of them. Uh, there's a band, Wet Leg, yeah, uh, yeah. I, I like I like to stick them sort of well. But actually, they should be the probably the first band actually because their their songs are all short and sweet. So I do have them go on first, and Pink Floyd come on after them. So I've got another one, not. Well, who could I who could, who could do them at the top of the bill? I'm trying to think. Hmm. I keep thinking the the Stones. The, um, I'll go with the Stones. Yeah, why not? You know. Yeah, nice. Well. Yeah. yeah, some ah uh, oh, lovely. Right on, right on cue there, Dan, with the uh, with the little peck there with the uh, the famous uh, <laughs> Stones logo. Love that. Great timing. It's like you knew he was going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> Great stuff, and what a what a, a lovely festival! I'm sure that that will be. So, kind of like then, we've sort of we have sort of touched on it a little bit in in our chat. But what is next then for Popclaw? What do you sort of see? Where do you see the you know what direction do you see the band going in uh, for, for for this year? Uh, well, we've got um, our second song. Uh, we're going to release that next month. Mm-hmm. Uh, to be marked. Yeah. Uh, basically, just yeah, going to be more songs after that. So it'll be another four after that one in March, um, throughout the rest of the year. And we're we're still record we're recording stuff for even next year now, aren't we? Dan? So I mean, we've yeah. got a couple more in the new well, So point. Our, our new single, Lightning, I think it's out March the sixth, and then uh, I mean, Chris, feel free to jump in if I'm if I'm That's getting. Right, I think we have one called Liar coming out at some point this year. Um, I think we have one called Adrift coming out over summer or maybe September. I'm not sure. Um, we were talking about doing a Christmas single, but I don't know how serious we were with that. Um, <laughs> I love this. I love how this is like planned out. Like, you know, you guys generally know what you're doing and when you're going to go and do it. Because I think that sometimes bands, oh, we're not, we're not really sure, you know, we're not making any decisions yet, but I like that this is, yeah, we know sort of sounds like every, every two, maybe three months. Yeah. Bang. We've, we've got new music coming yeah. out to, I guess. I've, I've learned from past mistakes of sort of doing that, sort of got, I'm in an R and so that's why we've um, quite prepared. And we, like, I could, like Dan said, we're not rushing to release something and then putting it out so we've made sure like I think these six we've probably listened to too much really because we're like, right. kind of trying to get them out of things you know <laughs> probably a bit overcritical of ourselves really but yeah um, yeah we're still mapped out and, open, and hopefully mapped out for next year as well so we're going to keep keep doing that and we don't really just keep recording writing and we're lucky and maybe we're we have the other things to do and it may meet up with each other <laughs> <laughs> yeah get a point um <laughs> We are, we're sort of blessed to live in this like amazing age of music technology. You know, Chris can record the bare bones sort of structure of a song. I can record the bare bones of a structure of a song. We can send them to each other. We can add bits. We can work together. We can change bits. We can, we can have a collaborative process without, you know, risking giving each other COVID. But uh, in a... (laughs) 
<laughs> but it's it's good because it also means that like we have the ability to record and do things at our own pace. We we aren't constrained by studio budgets and other things, so we don't have to worry about you know this needs to be finished in three days and if it's not then it's a waste of time mm -hmm. so what we get down is what we get down you know i that i was fiddling around with guitar lines on lightning earlier chris is gonna pull his hair out and cry in a minute <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> you know just to see just to see if it was the best it could be you know if if i was you know happy with what we'd done and yeah, we're keeping what's already there, but you know, we we can go, we can we can tinker, we can do things that you know other bands couldn't, and other bands maybe don't. But I also know that lots of bands now can do that. I mean, the greatest quote I think I ever heard about underground musicians that there's probably a kid, he's probably fifteen years old, and he's probably written the best song in the world, and no one will ever hear it because it's on his computer and he doesn't know how to put it out, or maybe he doesn't want to put it out, but it's the best song ever written. There you go. Great stuff. And um, lads, Chris, Dan, that is the end of the This Is The Music Meets Popcore podcast. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure uh, having you both on, and I've really enjoyed actually getting to know you both a little bit more, your musical background, and obviously finding out a little bit more um, about Popclaw as a band and, and obviously it sounds like you've got um, some really exciting stuff uh, coming up um, across the rest of the year and, and obviously beyond as well um, but just kind of like before you do go uh, can you let the listeners know exactly where they can find you on social media uh, okay, that's, really damn it. that's me for it my department uh, it's uh, Instagram uh, on Twitter and they're all Popclaw band and YouTube as well. We've done most free. So they're the free place you can find us. You've got, to be, you've got to be careful as well because it auto-corrects to poo claw if you're not careful. <laughs> oh, I, I would make sure I put the one piece. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I, I was selfish before I do it. Like, uh, if I do certain, I'll <laughs> 